Okay, now we are going to the fourth learning outcome under 2.5 which is explain population growth curve. So, you will learn about two growth curve. The first one exponential growth curve which we will focus on human population. And the second one is logistic growth curve which we will focus on paramecium species. For exponential growth curve, uh, this one is new to you because the uh, graph curve show j shape but for the logistic growth curve actually this one is very familiar because you already learn it during semester one chapter 10 growth which the other name for logistic growth curve is sigmoid growth curve uh, so from the name so we know that uh, for the logistic growth curve uh, has s shape curve okay let's move on to the first population growth curve uh, which is oh so this one is the shape for the j shape curve and s shape curve so for the j shape the name for the curve is exponential growth curve so but they grow exponentially and then the population tending to rise um, not going steady or stable okay and then Second uh, population growth curve is the logistic growth curve ataupun sigmoid growth curve. So, the bentuk S lah. Uh, yang ni population dia tend untuk jadi stable bila dah achieve uh, carrying capacity. Okay, just below carrying capacity. So, untuk uh, logistic growth curve, kenapa dia bentuk S? Disebabkan ada environmental resistance. Tapi untuk J shape curve, Dia bentuk J, dia sentiasa menaik ke atas disebabkan no environmental uh, resistance. Okay, let's move on to the first population growth curve. We have exponential uh, which we focus on human population. So, this curve refer to unlimited growth of a population and increase rapidly. Okay, so no limit to population size. So, in this world, our earth or our world today actually human population always increase from time to time or more specific from minute uh, from a uh, second to second okay ada saja pertambahan orang yang hidup dan mungkin orang yang telah meninggal dunia lah dicatatkan okay you may check in online so dia akan berubah sajalah uh, number of population in this world okay berubah lebih cepat uh, meningkat compared to yang menurun lah dia macam naik turun naik turun sebab every seconds or every minute actually ada saja baby yang dilahirkan dan ada saja orang yang akan meninggal okay and then for exponential growth curve the second point occur when environmental resistance are not limiting so actually for human population uh in general, actually, we still have many resources, many natural resources. Uh, we still have food, uh, space, more space, shelter, uh, and so on. Okay, uh, we are not overcrowding in general. But if we refer to uh, certain countries and certain population, actually, at one point, yes. Uh, there is environmental resistance. Uh, for example, we take um, Indian country, okay, negara India. So, negara India, dia punya population for 1 kilometer persegi, okay, satu kawasan tu, satu kilometer persegi, 1 kilometer, um, 1 kilometer. So, apa yang berlaku, uh, dekat situ je dah banyak human population, okay. Uh, kalau kita bandingkan dengan Malaysia, mungkin 1 km persegi tidak banyak orang lagi lah. So, not overcrowding. Tapi, uh, bila kita nak cakap pasal human population, kita kena refer part in general. Not uh, not specifically on particular population or particular countries. Okay. So, uh, secara generalnya, setakat ni kita boleh kata uh, tidak ada environmental resistance sebab semuanya masih adalah uh, petroleum untuk kereta bergerak, masih ada okay? uh, coal, um, limestone masih ada and banyak lagi lah natural resources yang masih ada. So, it's just that uh, going back to human hands, uh, 
uh, how we want to handle the natural resources to prevent uh, rapid depletion. Okay, uh, itu sajalah. Okay, and then for the third point, the population tend to increase slowly at first and then increase rapidly or exponentially as reproducing individual increases. So, kalau kita tengok dekat bawah ni, uh, pada awalnya, uh, kita punya hormon population, katakanlah kita ambil pada abad 1700 kan. Uh, so, uh, at first, they're growing slowly. Okay? Sebab kalau tengok um, from 1800 dengan 1900 ni, dia punya pertambahan hanyalah 1 billion. Okay? So, ni 1 billion going to 2 billion for 100 years. Only 1 billion. Tapi starting daripada uh, 1900 hingga ke 2000 dan up until now uh, 2021. Kita tengok pertambahan manusia sangat rapid. Okay? Uh, kalau daripada uh, kalau daripada 1900 ke 2000 which is 100 years sahaja kita boleh nampak pertambahan sebanyak 2 billion people. Okay, sebanyak 2 billion lah. Uh, ni tak lain tak bukan salah satu sebabnya adalah daripada industrial revolution. Okay, permulaan industrial revolution menyebabkan uh, start daripada situ kita dah jumpa um, banyak resources and then taraf hidup dah semakin meningkat. Okay. Uh, mungkin kesihatan semakin baik okay, waktu tersebut lah. Uh, so, menyebabkan um, lifespan of individu meningkat. Uh, so, and then uh, individu punya reproductivity capacity pun meningkat. Uh, so, starting daripada situ, memang terus sampai ke 2021, kita dah mencapai 7.8 billion human population. So, dah banyak lah. Okay. And then kita andaikan pada tahun 2024, kita punya human population boleh mencapai 8 billion. Itu uh, expectation lah. Tapi up until 2021 uh, February right now, kita dah mencapai 7.8 billion human population. Okay. And then kenapa juga human population ni boleh meningkat starting daripada 1900 ni sampailah ke 2021 disebabkan juga ada agriculture okay maksudnya penanaman dah mula banyak okay kalau uh, sebelum industrial revolution mungkin akan banyak famine okay maksudnya banyak kes kebuluran okay so disebabkan kebuluran uh, banyak human population yang mati dan juga beberapa jenis penyakit lah okay, yang pada waktu tersebut tidak jumpa lagi vaksin ataupun ubat okay, untuk rawat uh, that kind of disease. Uh, so, untuk uh, after industrial revolution tu barulah teknologi berkembang dengan sangat besar and then that's why lah daripada situ uh, in terms of agriculture pun dia meningkat lah. Uh, so, menyebabkan longer lifespan of individu dan mungkin boleh increase reproductive capacity. Okay. Seterusnya, uh, untuk exponential growth curve, uh, dia ada dua phases sahaja. The first one lag phase which is growth rate to slowly increase and the second one adalah log phase ataupun exponential phase which is rapidly increase. Okay. Uh, so, dia rapidly increase tu masa 1900 punya tahun lah. Abad ke-19 ni ke. Okay? Ataupun tahun ke-1900 lah starting until 2021. Uh, setakat ni untuk COVID-19, um, walaupun banyak yang dah mati, tapi dia belum lagi mencapai uh, bilion lah, baru million juta lagi. Okay? Okay, uh, so dia akan naik sikit slowly and then exponentially. So, setakat ni graf kita memang J-shaped curve, okay. Uh, belum lagi mencapai S-shaped curve. Kalau graf human population mencapai S-shaped curve, maksudnya ada environmental resistant lah. Tapi setakat ni kita tidak ada environmental resistant ataupun limiting factor yang menyebabkan human population tak boleh increase. Setakat ni boleh. Cuma pada certain 
a population ataupun pada certain countries mungkin ada environmental resistance yang menyebabkan Uh, tidak mencapai growth rate yang maksimum lah okay? Tapi yang saya cakap ni in general Okay, okay seterusnya um, Next point Initial growth is low uh, Due to small number of reproducing individual in the original population Later, rapid increase in population size over short period of time Okay Maybe due to improved healthcare, medical, increased food production and so on. Okay, so uh, I would say uh, kalau famine kebuluran tu uh, mungkin memang masih ada uh, pada tahun 2021 ni. Tapi I would say less, maybe less than before industrial revolution. Okay, moving on, next point for exponential growth curve. When a population exhibit exponential growth, the population is growing at or near biotic potential. Maksudnya, an individu has maximum growth rate due to absence of environmental resistance. So, we we'll say that exponential growth curve, growth in ideal condition. Maksudnya, kalau tidak ada environmental resistance, uh, means that has... Uh, plenty of food, plenty of water, space, no accumulation of toxic waste, no disease. I would say this uh, growth is in ideal condition. Okay. Okay, so ini adalah data setakat yang saya ambil pada 14 of February uh, at 8.15 am in morning Malaysia time. So, kadar kelahiran Uh, pada 14 Februari saja Malaysia time adalah 131,880 baby. Tapi ini satu negara lah. Bukan satu Malaysia. Okay? <laughs> satu negara. Okay? So kadar kematian juga kalau kita tengok. Um, 55,366. Okay? Termasuklah kes COVID dan so on. Okay? 